Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, latest uh, EO Cafe. Um, great to see everyone here again. Um, second one in two weeks uh, because of the, uh, the, the the previous rearrangement. Um, so just a, a reminder, normal rules, um, leave your microphones off unless I ask you to, uh, to join the conversation. Um, happy for you to leave your cameras on so that we can see you and we can uh, have a better idea of who's on the call. Um, if you have questions, please put them into the chat. You know, we normally go through for about 40 minutes and then there'll be questions and uh, you, know, you join in. But uh, if you can just pop your question into the chat beforehand, then we've got an idea of what's coming up. And uh, normally I'll ask you to read out or not to read out, but to put, pose your own question. Um, but having it in the chat beforehand just gives us an idea of what's uh, what's what's coming up. So I'm very pleased today to welcome uh, Gordon, Gordon Campbell from, from ESA. Um, Gordon is the head of the of enterprise, and we'll dig into that a little bit in a, in a minute, in the ESA, ESA EO directorate. Uh, now ESA, as I guess most people here will be fully aware, has a mandate to support industry. It's part of the, um, um, the, the, the um, um, constitution to um, support the European industry, support the development of the industry, uh, fostering industrial competitiveness, building capacity, and um, seeking to inv increase investment in the overall space domain. And generally, this is focused on the upstream, but increasingly member states are acknowledging the importance of leveraging the upstream investments to develop a downstream industry and uh, so justifying and exploiting the upstream investment. And this has manifested itself uh, also in a, a recent creation of a new directorate, uh, the commercialization director in ESA that again we'll talk about. So driving innovation is one of the keys and in recent years ESA has launched a number of initiatives uh, with this goal. Incubed, the BICs, the Accelerators, the Phylab are all examples where ESA has led the way. And Destiny is another one where maybe there will be a good commercial uh, opportunity, innovation uh, opportunities. So the group in Frascati, led by Gordon, has long been a supporter of the EO services sector and has itself launched many initiatives, including the GMES service elements, uh, a number of best practice projects, links to the international financial institutions, and I'm sure that Gordon will uh, will cite others in in that. Um, so it's sometimes as we've um, we've we've heard about some of these activities. Uh, we've had Steve Colson and Chris uh, Albrecht on in the EO Cafe before, so it's high time we got to know a little bit more about how well, Gordon is uh, is shaping the. Uh, uh, the activities. So, Gordon, welcome to the EO Cafe. Thank you. Um, Pleasure to be here. Um, maybe we could just start just by saying a few words about yourself and how you get to be head of enterprise in the EO directorate in ESA. Uh, well, I mean, so I got a PhD in geophysics. Um, I was working in the UK on the defence sector many years ago um, at the point at which the Soviet Union collapsed. So, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the companies in the defence sector started looking for other things to do, and we got into telecoms and air traffic control and uh, remote sensing. So based on that, I then ended up over in Ezrin in the mid-1990s at the point where we were trying to, uh, uh, I mean, at, at that point, uh, um, really the exclusive focus of ESA was on the space hardware. And, um, so I was um, I asked to come over and help set up a sort of application-focused uh, capability mm. back then in the mid 90s and I've been here ever since doing uh, uh, various you know different applications developments whether it was as you said the GMS service element um, work, the um, working on the uh, uh, the initial uh, activities with the World Bank European Investment Bank Inter-American Development Bank um, looking at uh, some of the more um, you know the, the less touched domains where we can still make impact like law enforcement and things and and now really with the um uh you know with the the, the massive um expansion of uh, in particular downstream or new space capabilities you know there's a lot of stuff that is 
um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the majority of things around Europe were somehow invented by ESA. Uh, now there's a lot of stuff that is being invented outside of ESA. You know, there's a lot of private investment coming in, in into the sections into the sector. So how do we um, put all these things together so that everybody wins? Everybody's looking for um, you know uh, commercial expansion, commercial return. How do how do we get get that for everybody? Um, the small guys, the big guys, everybody. And how do we expand beyond? Um, the traditional idea of geospatial information, how do we get out of that into um, the sort of wider, uh, all, all the different analytics domains that um, this type of information can be uh, integrated into? Uh, and so, you know, how, how, how do we do that? And I think that's that's really where we're trying to go um, go, go now, get, get out of this, the, you know, the sort of things that people were saying maybe 10 years ago, spatial is special and things like that. And we say, it's not, it's, it's, it's part of something that, that should be in a much wider uh, context. That's how, uh, if we're going to get a, a sort of step increase in the due return, I think that's one of the, the, the main things we have to be looking at. So, yeah, that, that's that's where we've come to now. You've muted yourself. I think I've already talked to you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um yeah, you mentioned geo return. Um, key tool that ESA has, um, certainly in terms of uh, industrial policy, and uh, makes an enormous difference compared to uh, uh, the Commission and other, um, well, it's essentially the Commission and Union uh, activities. I recall um, when I was uh, a young engineer, I mean, ESA was seen as a customer. You know, there was not really this notion. Of trying to uh, you know develop and use it as a lever to develop other activities outside perhaps of the uh, the commons domain where uh, there was you know quite strong commercial activity and commercial actors sort of have built up but but to buy satellites and it was all about selling uh, selling hardware and certainly the the situation has has changed a lot um, over the last uh, 20 10 years so um you're Head of enterprise. Enterprise can mean many things. An enterprise can be a business. Uh, it can mean a project that requires creativity and boldness. Um, it can mean a readiness to embark on new ventures. In other words, to be enterprising. Uh, which of these applies? What's the in the context of ESA? What is it to be head of ed, head of enterprise? Well, that's I, I don't think I've thought of it in those um, in that <laughs> level of sophistication already uh, so far. I mean, um, what we're what we're I mean, the core activity is about um, stimulating industrial competitiveness uh, inside Europe. I mean, when we started doing this sort of applications development, you know, um, a million years ago, um, there was a lot of technical issues that had to be addressed. You know, I mean, the the availability of the Earth observation data wasn't sufficiently reliable. In, in network connections weren't. How do we get you know these complicated data sets into uh, a, a situation that uh, normal operation real. users? Yeah, reels uh, the tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, you know, um, we've we've got this. Um, one of the exhibitions you can come to in ESA is is um, you know all the old HDDT tapes and things like that and um all the young people fall about laughing at the idea of uh, yes. um, mounting one of these things um so but in in those times uh we used to fund sort of application demonstrations and look at uh you know that that was that was the core of it how can we show this this type of stuff working um as best as it can and i mean that that's was sort of led into gms service element things as well now we don't need to do that. I mean, with all of the, um, you know, the, the the platform environments that we have, the DS developments, uh, Amazon, all, all these sorts of capabilities, the processing uh, is there. The access to, to 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 the data sets is there. So the effort you need to sort of demonstrate new applications of NDVI or something like that, it's not that complicated anymore. Okay. So I mean, it's not that we've we've stopped doing that, but we're saying that's not the um, you know that that's not the difficult thing that it used to be uh, in in the in, in the early two thousand. So if you want to do that, we'll still support you. We'll still support you as ESA uh, if you want to develop the, these sorts of commercial uh, activities. But it's done in a different way. That that's done under programs like Incubed and Bass, etc., where we would expect a co-funding from industry because the returns come back to industry. You're not really pushing the boundary. You're pushing 
a market expansion. So that comes back to you. You're developing your customer base. What we're trying to do in, in the enterprise, we're saying, okay, that's all fine. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that isn't going to happen unless we come along and shake the tree a bit. Uh, that's, that's what we're saying up till now. So for example, uh, if you look at uh, a lot of the new systems that are becoming available, the new uh, commercial X-band SAR systems, uh, systems like Planet you know, with a number of uh, uh, you know, a level, you know, constellations, a level of persistent uh, that is, you know, people were just dreaming of uh, uh, 10 years ago. Um, what are the what are the things that we can do with with, with that sort of uh, capability? So, for example, uh, we can start. You know, we started the um, uh, the whole sort of INSAR going into PSNSAR as a uh, getting that as a, a sort of recognised, accepted, credible uh, measurement approach for uh, land motion characterization. I think we're at a similar starting point for a number of new techniques like you know te techniques that were in the past quite limited uh in the civilian domain so things like uh, inverse SAR processing to focus and understand what you know if, if something's moving in the SAR image um mm. can we reconstruct that and understand what it is mm. SAR micro doppler processing so we can look at uh, vibrations of extended targets and you know, figure out what's going on there uh, low light level enhancement for um uh, optical systems uh, that are acquiring outside of the nice half past 10 in the morning uh, time scale. So you're looking at, uh, you know, close to dusk or wherever, low contrast feature extraction, all of that type of stuff, you know, it, it's not coming out mainstream. Um, and a lot of the publications, the research publications in academia, it's not in Europe, it's elsewhere. So how do we get, you know, how do we get European data benefiting from the, these type of uh, academic uh, developments? How do we get these into industry? So that's, that's, the first thing we're trying to stimulate is stuff that is kicking around that isn't coming out of academia that is potentially useful how do we get that into industry and into applications and um when when possible in front of users and customers so they can say yeah this is this is useful uh, let's take this further how do, how do we integrate this into operational practice how do we develop this into uh, an eventual business but we're, we're not looking at the business as such it's too early we're looking at how do we get this stuff into industry in an industrial setting and then uh, industry can find a way to take that forward the other thing we're looking at is uh, sort of structural problems that are inhibiting the uptake of uh, civilian uh, EO-derived information, whether that is how do we more effectively integrate the Earth observation with other data streams. So, uh, for example, mobile network information. There's a lot of mobile network information, with, but it's, it's, it's a totally different structure. I mean, the, the, the update times of these things is every few seconds. Uh, how, how, do, how do we combine these sorts of uh, heterogeneous data sets into a, an integrated analysis uh, product that makes sense, that is obvious, people can understand uh, how to use it. So these sorts of technical problems, how do we address structural problems in the uptake? So if we're looking at, for example, um, a domain like civil engineering, if there's uh, engineering best practices that all the civil engineers have to stick to, and that doesn't mention any earth observation capabilities, um, how do we get these civil engineering companies to use EO-derived information? We have to work with the regulatory uh, bodies or the industry representative bodies in these sectors. and progressively to get the uh, the regulation and the best practices changed and that isn't just let's change it and make everything all right you have to work through the individual examples and say you know if you want to do psn sar for monitoring stability of infrastructure uh, this is one way of doing it your know, combination of psn sar s pass etc uh, just you know straight three image differential geometry isn't good enough and we, we, we go through these sorts of use cases and say this is fit for purpose this is not really fit for purpose this other one but you can in, under some circumstances and this other stuff over here forget it we our recommendations don't use it putting that sort of structure in place with the uh, the regulatory bodies or the the representative bodies etc again that's how how do we uh, how do we address a structural block? Because an individual company is not going to address that by itself. I mean, they're not going to invest their own resources um, that their competitors can benefit from. So at that point, it needs to be public money, like you said, that's going to address it. So that's that's the sort of thing we're looking at: structural blockages, um, looking at like export market potentials, these sorts of, you know, the demand issues that will benefit everybody, and no, but and no one company is going to do by themselves. We're looking at as well. So supply side. How do they get the new stuff into companies and demand side structural blockages and uh, you know, structural opportunities that will benefit everybody? That's really what we're focusing on. Okay, and we so try and be enterprising while we're doing it. Yeah. How, 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 do you, how do you do that in reality? How are you, um, you, you, you're making decisions between, you give you different examples of uh, SAR technology. Um, you're leaving it to the market, the companies to make those decisions. How are those being played off? 
I mean, obviously, I mean, we don't just, I mean, we're not sitting in our offices just um, uh, making the stuff up. When we're looking at, I mean, we're, we're in, in touch with a lot of stakeholders. So we're saying, look, this is uh, um, the sort of thing that's coming through. Uh, these are the sort of potential. So they're, they're giving us um, you know, priorities in terms of you need to be at this threshold before this is really interesting um, uh, type feedback. Uh, we're, uh, we're at a lot of uh, technical conferences. We use um, the big events like Living Planet, uh, Big Data from Space, 6th to 9th of November in Vienna, everybody, if you're not already registered. Uh, these sorts of events, we have sessions at the consultation. Look, I mean, um, we had uh, the last um, uh, fee week, we had quite a good uh, session with all the guys working on super resolution enhancement for optical and infrared data. So everybody, everybody has got the capability. Come around and we'll discuss how to move forward on this. Where are the priority areas that have to be developing? And we're looking to organise um, another workshop on that uh, in the near future. Either a dedicated, um, whoever's interested, come along uh, to an online uh, discussion, or um, something dedicated February, March next year in in a in a bigger workshop, if we can find a bigger workshop to, to embed it into. So we say, look, we've come a certain way with super resolution, but we've still got a whole bunch of people making completely improbable claims on PowerPoint slides on what we can do with Sentinel-2 data. And, you know, how, how do we how, how do we get something that, we, you know, is reliable, credible, does what it says all the time, uh, and, um, you know, it, it's fit for purpose. So these sorts of consultations are also um, you know, absolutely uh, critical and fundamental in terms of uh, how we do the selection. So it's, it's a mix of things. Yeah. Um, okay. There, there are one of the things we found with um, the O Cafe is that um, we have a lot of new actors coming in who sort of don't understand the. Um, the, the sort of institutional picture. So just sort of try to cover that a little bit, step to what step to one side and ask about your how you're working with um, with with the commission, with USPA, the new space agency, the space programs agency, sorry, uh, that's been 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 set up. It's probably fairly early days, but uh, what's what what what's your perspective there? I, I see um, significant opportunities, really. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of the commission, okay, I mean, I, I, the, okay, com, um, Copernicus has been a game changer on a number of dimensions, and we're still uh, exploring new dimensions in which it, it's it's changing uh, how things can work. So just providing the routine data um, that is reliable, it's there, you know it's going to be there every six days sentinel two um now and you know it's going to be like that in, until the 2030s so uh, yeah. we can you know we, we've got a lot of space to do um you know a whole bunch of stuff with that level of reliability um i mean the other thing that is increasingly happening it, it, it was slow to start with but it's ramping up is uh, the institutional demand for information derived from this stuff um having the policy guys all talking to each other about about this, and it's not uh, techie guys. Is is actually it's starting to make a difference now. I mean, just, we've just been in uh, sort of uh, in the last couple of weeks a number of these sorts of discussion. You know, people are, are really you know, there's a sort of acceleration in terms of uh, yeah, this stuff is useful, and you know, my friend Bob's using it. So rather than this techie guy, I'm not really sure is, is saying we can do this. You know, Bob's using it; he likes it. So um, you know, let's go with it. So I think that's that's making a difference. You know, the, the demand by itself without a, a, a dedicated investment um, on, on the development side is is, is increasing. Um, that that increase in demand on, on the commission side has meant that um, we're in a, we're not at the same level as the US obviously, but we're starting to get a critical mass of demand, for example, for uh, new data sets that the, the European Commission can aggregate in the framework of Copernicus. It's not all Copernicus as it was up until now. I mean, it's a much wider footprint, if you like. But that demand can be aggregated. Uh, we've got, a, as part of the delegation of uh, Copernicus funding to us, um, as you know, we've got the, um, we're, we're delegated to procure the uh, the data for the uh, Copernicus services from Copernicus contributing missions, things that the Sentinels can't do. We, we buy data from uh, other providers. Now, at this point, we're really, we're moving to a totally new way of working with mm the non-traditional actors were able to start working as an anchor tenant, really aggregating the demand from the commission side and putting it into 
one budget so we can you know, we can work we, we can still work in the same way buying data under um you know subscription agreements or whatever uh, how things are done but we can start acting as an anchor tenant as well which opens up a lot of uh, new opportunities for supporting in particular uh, the new space guys that are um you know the, the small constellations we've got maybe one or two satellites in orbit now we're looking for 20 satellites by uh, 2026 27 how can public sector money such as copernicus leverage and generate additional private sector investment into the, the guys that are building the systems without that sort of stakeholder aggregation that 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 that, that sort of interaction between the different financing streams and the the virtuous circle isn't possible so that it's opening up that opportunity which i think is uh, is really interesting same with uspa um uh, I, I mean having an organization inside the eu that can work with um different sectors like the transport sector or whatever i mean that has a um an aggregating um connection i mean if we're working with the transport sector uh, like the shipping sector or the the road sector whatever is isa or as the enterprise uh, section, even um, you know, we go organically. We you know we we start working with with um, you know some port authorities, then other port authorities that are friends of the ones we start, and we build it up organically. Uh, USPA can come along and say, right, all port authorities, um, you know, we're we're in touch with you. We know who you are. Uh, we know who your point of contact is. We can get you all together, and then this is what we're going to decide from the, from the space uh, side of things. What do you guys think? So we we can, ESA will never be able to do that. Hmm. USPA can, so I think, but at the same time, USPA doesn't have the the the, the sort of technical knowledge to come along and say, let's do micro doppler processing, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, so you know, we're coming from one direction, USPA is coming from another, and if we can match stuff, and as you said, it's early days, um, but I, th I see a lot of potential for matching um, the different directions we're coming from, and really creating uh, an opportunity for expanding um, commercial and operational uptake in sectors that haven't really seen as much as we would like to have seen up until now. Mm. You're, you're evoking very much what we um, consistently find in, in the work we do on, on SEBS, the, uh, the benefit uh, analyses, where unfortunately it still very much depends on a champion. You know, it, it's, it's somebody in an organisation who, who understands and knows and is a champion, but they move. And we've still got this step to institutionalise um, this, this, this approach. And uh, so the the notion of building networks in a, an industry sector is certainly something that um, I'm hoping to see more of and uh, uh, coming coming through. We tried it a bit with a project we had called FIRE, which was uh, successful in its own right, but didn't really go far enough. Uh, and being a commission project, of course, it, uh, it, it comes to an end and we need to find ways to continue with that. Um, I think the other, the other thing, just um, yeah. thinking, thinking about it, I mean, you mentioned USPA. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to come back to it later, in which case tell me to shut up. But I, mean, I think the other thing that has come from uh, this type of aggregation is, is, is the destination Earth idea as well. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, again, you know, there's, there's a core investment coming from the European Commission in terms of putting a... Um, you know, an advanced capability for Earth system modeling, uh, whether it's you know, the extreme events type model or, or the climate model, um, that gives us you know the the predictive capability for uh, the Earth system, uh, which is is interesting in itself. I think if we can start doing, um, you know, how, how do we take the outputs of these climate models and get them into the sort of analysis models that different uh, industrial operators or whatever will have. Mm. I mean, if you look at, for example, um, steel production. I mean, what do how how steel production going to have to go through a green transition that will be, you know, climate neutral and cope with climate adaptation conditions over the next uh, fifty to hundred years? Um, how how do we support that that happening? Um, so the core model of the Earth system is there. How do we look at the interaction between um, geographic? Uh, or earth and environmental parameters, human parameters, and the industrial uh, process uh, characteristics. That that type of analysis can really, I mean, the earth observation can, and, and connected with uh, other uh, data streams can obviously help improve the characterization of that. We, there's um, various um, modeling uh, uh, methodologies different from the sorts that we're doing in earth system modeling. So agent-based models, these sorts of things. Um, mm. How do we drive these with a combination of Earth observation data and the outputs of these uh, digital twin Earth core engines to really support 
the big European industry go through the sort of transitions in an optimal way and uh, exploit the emerging opportunities in there. And I think this just being um, in the position that we are, that the Earth observation is connected to the modelling, is connected to the infrastructure. Again, I think the start and part of the the driver for that is this this sort of institutional coming together. And people are saying, oh, you know, this is interesting. And we let's, let, you know, we want to be involved. We can try this. We were thinking of doing this other thing, but we can do it with you guys as well. So that, I think that's a, a consequence of what you were talking about as well. Yeah, and de Destiny, Destination Earth, uh, fostering new uh, new relationships and new... Uh, um, yeah, new, new, like... new, new ways to do, new analysis that wasn't possible before. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Not, not really credible. So maybe coming back to a little bit closer to, to home, um, you know, Earth is representing the Earth services sector. We've worked very closely with you over over many years. Um, what's what's coming up? What what are the what are the things over the next I don't know 12, 24 months that you're you're looking to push, you're looking to develop? Um, okay, so we mentioned the new processing. Techniques. So the plan is basically every six months we're. Um, uh, I, mean, we, we, I think if we do everything all at once, we'll just saturate everybody. We don't have the manpower uh, to handle it either. So as you said, we're prioritising uh, when things are uh, when we've got a sort of critical mass of data, interest, capability, etc. That it makes sense. So the the plan is every six months we'll have a a tender on uh, new processing methods, like say the micro Doppler, low light level, low contrast feature extraction. These sorts of uh, things that let us do more with the data we've already got. So directed, six directed or um, open for, for ideas? Uh, I mean, we'll have, you know, three or four lines that are directed. Um, but in that, in that sort of thing, again, you know, we need to we need to account for the fact that, uh, you know, we don't, we may not have the total or um, mm. uh, valid uh, visibility. So th there'll be a sort of wildcard line uh, in each of these as well. So if, if there's another sort of method you, that uh, somebody has said, like, I don't want to do these things, I want to do this other one, and it's just as good as um, what you've what you specified in the tender, then you know we'll we'll have a, a sort of wildcard line in that. You know, you say you if you want to do these, you specify, uh, you explain what this is, why it's important, how it works, why what the impact is, and you know, we'll treat it just like uh, whatever we specified. But you have you know you have to specify it um to a sort of similar level so that we can uh, understand that it is the same sort of thing so that's that's there and i think you know um the original uh price per contract we had based on um uh, our sort of counting of what we expect people to do was about 300k per project that's tight so i think as of next year we'll be uh looking at uh, 350 400k uh, per activity there mm -hmm. uh, assuming we've got the budget to cover it um, the same, we'll be looking at um, you know, a, sort of, uh, a regular set of tenders on industrialization of uh, uh, AI-based methods. So, I mean, there's been an awful lot of stuff on deep learning-based. No, sorry. Um, there's been a lot of stuff on uh, you know deep learning-based feature extraction. I mean, uh, you know, if you talk about uh, machine learning-based um, uh, methods with Earth observations, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of AI-based methods out there, or AI machine learning technologies that are connectable with Earth observation. We can do really interesting things. And I don't think they're getting the um, the attention they deserve because there's a lot of uh, um, you know, significant potential impact from the capabilities like uh, graph AI uh, methods. So how do we start? You know, how, how can we sort of look at start characterizing not just a single process or a single situation? How do we start analyzing more complex? Um, sort of combinations of situations to understand, you know, the whole end-to-end -end process, and to do that in a manageable way, we're going to have to look at uh, uh, methods like, such as uh, graph AI. So these these sorts of uh, uh, alternative uh, AI methods. The, how do we combine Earth observation with um, uh, emulators of uh, you know some of the uh, the large Earth system models, rather than dealing with just the models? How you know, let's look at subsystems with emulators. We can uh, fiddle around much uh, much more flexibly with them. So that that type of um, non deep learning feature extraction AI, we'll be looking at uh, how how do we how do we do more of there, um, and also how do we start? I, I was mentioning before in the destination Earth, um, the analysis processes for um, the, the sort of industry sectors and economic uh, activities where there has to be some sort of um, uh, adaptation uh, planning. Um, 
how do we connect AI? How do, how do we connect Earth observation into uh, these these sorts of analysis? Because a lot of the analysis, a lot of the analysis methodologies, they're not the sort of the nice raster GIS type stuff that we've we've been dealing with for the last twenty years. I mean, we're talking about stuff like agent based models for for process characterization. How can we drive these and with uh, with Earth observation? So we'll, we'll be having regular tenders for these sorts of analysis capabilities integrated with Earth observation to improve uh, how the, how they can um, both uh, act by themselves in an improved way and also be more integrable with the sorts of investments such as uh, Destination Earth. We're not saying this is exclusively for um, leveraging the Destination Earth uh, investments, but how, how do we connect all these things in the framework of green transition, uh, whether it, you know, it can be other people's core models or whatever, but how, if, we're not, if we're not making these connections between the Earth observation and these sort of alternative uh, or for the Earth observation community, analysis capabilities, we're not going to get into uh, the sort of uh, analysis processes in the sectors we have to address if we're really going to be addressing the the, the green transition uh, opportunities. So that's again when we're having these sorts of tenders on a uh, on a twelve month basis. And I think the last one we'll be doing on a regular basis is what we call um, best practices uh, or establishing mm -hmm. best practices. And that's what I was talking about before. That's like looking at um, priority sectors and saying, what are the, the sort of structural impediments yeah. inhibiting uh, uptake of earth observation? Um, what are the earth observation, the priority earth observation uh, capabilities of interest? And what do we have to do uh, to, to address these structural Im impediments? So, you know, we've just uh, we've just opened the latest one uh, a couple of, a few days ago. So I think that was on um, uh, ports, uh, offshore wind, uh, solar and uh transport i think transport infrastructure so and you know we're, we'll have another one well our work plan for next year is still to be approved by our delegates but uh, yeah. the draft the draft work plan will be to have another one and i mean uh, we're really seeing uh, uh, a massive uh, wave of um interest in in areas like you know what do we really do for for example for um uh, uh, the, the whole sort of carbon uh, trading uh, situation so the uh, the effective and credible and traceable monitoring, um, and, and, you know, for uh, uh, credits, etc. So I mean, all of uh, all of that type of analysis, uh, I think you know, we're 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 at a point where we can really uh, make a difference and start looking at you know some of the related sectors as well. So I think that will be one of the priority areas we we hope to look at uh, in in the coming years. So these are, these are sort of the main uh, thing things we're doing, and then uh, you know we're trying to think how do we? There's a whole bunch of uh, sectors that. Um, uh, we've never really made inroads into, um, so I think you know, we'll be doing some thinking. Um, we we will be bugging you guys as well, uh, and we'll be organising workshops. I mean, how do we get into some of the sectors that have been, you know, they're they're big sectors, and we're we're still not addressing them the right way. So I mean, like tourism is one that's been annoying me for several years. I mean, there's not, you know, it's one of the biggest economic activities on the planet, and we're still haven't figured out from the Earth Observation Community, you know, how do we, uh, how do we do something that generates revenue for um for the eu guys uh manufacturing is another one that we've never really made uh, proper uh, inroads health is increasingly important so there's a number of these sorts of sectors we'll be looking at sort of consultation how do we really do useful things rather than uh here's some indices hey go off and do what you want I mean, it, it needs to be a different way of working and that's what we're uh, looking at doing over the next few years okay um so the, the program Submitting to uh, to member states and need, needs to be approved. The budget is already there. I I, I assume for the, for the next couple of years, the, the budget is there. So we, we have uh, ministerial in twenty twenty five. Um, so we're still, you know, I mean that's still uh, 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 there's still a lot of uh, discussions on um, what we're going to be coming uh, to in twenty twenty five. There's a lot of um, a lot of initiatives. I, see, I mean, commercialization is increasingly important. Yeah. Um, we have this these. Um, uh, uh, the, the, this sort of set of uh, accelerators that uh, um, we're, we're sort of engaging with um, different communities. We're trying to work in a different way. Um, in, in, in the, so, I mean, there's uh, an accelerator called Space for Green Future. But so how can we work with a whole bunch of different uh, stakeholders, not in a way where uh, tell us what you want and we'll, we'll get some money from the member states and develop something for you. It's how do we all work together in, 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 in a way that we can really start addressing the green transition priorities. And we're not just doing monitoring of indicators or, or whatever, really getting Earth observation into 
being part of the solution, not monitoring the problem. Uh, so how, how do we do that? And, you know, there's, uh, you know, we have to start thinking about how we work in different ways. Our member states have to accept that, um, you know, they or they agree that, that we can work uh, in, in this different way. And, you know, we just have the appropriate uh, engagement with the uh, with the different stakeholders. We had a workshop last week with um, uh, about 20, 20 of them. So it was like uh, your uh, EBRD, um, Covenant of Mayors, um, mm -hmm. uh, World Bank, etc. So, I mean, there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, for, for the, this type of different way of working. Everybody's re ready to uh, try things out. Um, and, yeah, we have to see how do we go forward. And, you know, we, we leverage everybody's uh, available resources in the most efficient ways, not just you know, some... Uh, is you know, more of the same. I mean, it's, it's really trying to work in a different way. So that's that's something that we'll be uh, looking at how, how we put meat on these bones over the next 12 months or so. Yeah, I guess there'll be there'll be um, further discussion on that. The ERSC board will be uh, will be down meeting with Simonetta in a few weeks. Time. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, that... I, I shan't be able to be there because I actually have a, a project progress meeting uh, in Brussels. So unfortunately, I shan't be able to come, but uh, I should be... Uh, following it and uh, looking to follow up one of the topics that's been discussed there not perhaps perhaps not um directly uh sort of aimed at you but has, has been the, the setting up of a number of, of metrics particularly about the time to um you know from sort of an, a publication or announcement of a of an opportunity through to award of contract and sometimes the delays there have been rather rather excessive so i know yeah, we've been pushing hard to try to uh, to get metrics on that and to to improve on it. I, I don't know if there's any. It's a, it's a priority for us. I mean, if you look at Joseph's um, agenda for transforming the agency, I mean, this is one of the uh, the main lines. And I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, internal pressure. There's been a lot of internal work uh, for how. I mean, and we, you know, we're telling you a small number of, of KPIs on that. There's a lot of analysis going on internally uh, on mm. how we can get early early warning of blockages and problems, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, we need to be much more uh, agile in terms of um, how we're processing uh, th th these sorts of uh, these sorts of elements. Um, so, I mean, for example, I mean, in the permanently open call that, that we've been running since, um, 2017 uh, so we were having a sort of you know there was a deadline for proposals every three months now every four months and we were getting um somewhere between 60 and 90 proposals every batch i mean it was a lot of analysis effort for us to properly mm. review all these proposals you know but we were putting people on it it was you know it was a you know we get a big wave of proposals but you know everybody was enthusiastic so we we're dealing with it but then i mean what happened then Okay, so, you know, we turned the thing around really quickly. We did the evaluation. We selected the guys. And then we get to negotiating the contracts, okay? We're not, we're, at that point, we were not allowed to tell the people that were unsuccessful that yeah. they hadn't been selected until we'd signed the last of the contract with the 10 yeah. or the 12 or whatever guys that we had selected. Okay, so these guys could have been waiting for maybe like three or four months, longer even. I mean, in some cases, you know, if some of the contracts dragged on because people were arguing about obscure contract mm. conditions or whatever i mean you know so in some cases in some cases we do you know we find that we're not we just you know, the contracts aren't being signed because it's taking too long to get things back or whatever um so we're not we're not under these rules we were not allowed to inform uh the unsuccessful bidders okay i mean you can look at um east of star or whatever and say well look it's under negotiation nobody's contacted me so therefore i infer uh but you know it, it's a bit rubbish so um you know what we ended up doing well, firstly, we got a waiver from the contractual saying we were allowed to uh, inform people at the same time as we're informing the unsuccessful people. Now we've changed the rules. Okay, we got we got the rules changed, uh, so that we're now we're now you know it, it all goes out together. So um, you know th things aren't set in stone. We realise there's problems. We we look at them and we come up. We're we're, we're trying to come up with solutions uh, on 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 these sorts of things. So you know that's um, uh, that's happening from our side. But but look, I mean. Um, it's it, industry has to play its part as well. Okay, so I mean, you know, if we're trying to turn around the signature signature of a contract very quickly, or we're trying to negotiate very quickly, uh, or whatever, come on, guys. You know, I mean, it's uh, 
don't 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 spend six weeks to come back on um, minor clarifications or you know we're busy we'll tell you I mean if you're, you're if you're like that you're holding up the process and there'll be ramif consequences of that not just not, not just for you so that mm. you know we're all in this together so please you know if you are uh, in these things take I mean take it seriously because I mean, at some point you know, the um, you know we, we we may start having to um, so we'll say you know if you're not interested, you know we don't place contracts. I mean that could be uh, one of the options. So look, you know it's, uh, it, we're both in this together. So let's yeah. uh, uh, let's let's make it as good as possible. Just before I open it up for other other questions, I mean we um, some years ago now we sort of initiated the sort of information days, industry information days. We we discussed uh, on on that. Um, is that uh, information day is that planned is there anything planned on that uh so i mean we we did one in march um yeah. Yeah. for the for the, for the new work plan i mean uh mm -hmm. we'll try and do one uh, next year for uh, the work plan yeah. for uh 2024 uh we do um with with um with individual member states in particular new member states but also uh, just any member state that asks if if the delegation asks we'll do a national uh, briefing yeah. Yeah. um Oh, I think, I think uh, with with these briefings as well. I mean, you know, that we've got sort of dedicated time set aside for one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussions with people that are interested in in, in bidding. So, um, the problem is, um, uh, you know, we've got maybe twenty minutes per company uh, to have a to have a chat. Um, just just let me emphasize that's not it. Okay, you've had your twenty minutes, and we'll never talk to you again. It's the start of a conversation. I mean, when you see the work plan when you see intended ITTs or whatever if things are interesting for you give us a call to have a discussion okay um it's our job to be disturbed okay don't know we're going to be very busy you know it's uh, you know I'm only a little company I mean everybody has the same right to phone us up and ask us questions because it is our job to give you the information that you need to make the best proposal that you can we're not allowed to tell you our opinions or uh, give an opinion on on options you might want. You know, what about you know? Should I partner with this company or this other company? We're not allowed to uh, answer that sort of thing. But stuff that you need to put the best proposal forward. Uh, if you've not got that information and the tender's not out, give us a call. Or um, if you're at, if you're if there's workshops or whatever, you know, grab us by the ear and uh, uh, um, you know, corner us and ask ask us these sorts of questions. We're we're here to. Um, to support the industry, really. Yeah. Uh, and um, the, the other aspect, sorry, is um, if you are submitting a, a, a proposal, okay, even if your proposal is accepted and you're placing a contract, always, always, always ask for a debrief of your proposal, okay? Uh, if, you're un if you're unsuccessful, definitely ask for a debrief. If you're successful, still ask for a debrief because there may be things that you did that you know, uh, lowered your marks uh, in a particular criteria that maybe on this case it, it didn't make a difference but in other cases it might so just so that you know these things um always 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 ask for a debrief and it is our job to give them as well mm -hmm. okay well for successful uh bidders i guess that's part of the uh the kickoff to uh... no no i mean not unless you ask for it yeah okay okay i mean so, you know so... the, the, the kickoff is always you know how, how you're going to get started yeah. Um, so, um, you know, if, if, and you know, everybody's always busy and whatever. So, you know, if, if um, nobody asks them, we don't think about it. But you know, always, always, always ask for a debrief. So I hope uh, everyone on the call is is listening to that. And I think again, the um, the information days are a good um, a good way to. I, I mean, if you want more online. as well, you know, I mean, if you want, I don't know. I mean, if 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 you think the information isn't getting out let us know and we'll figure out what to do about it I mean, we can have a discussion on it if if information is if sufficient information no, isn't getting it, out into no, sufficiently it, widely i mean we want to make sure um i mean well, we're having discussion last week um are we using linkedin and these sorts of uh, media enough or should we be finding ways uh to um uh, to leverage these sorts of technologies as well Again, I mean, it's a little bit sensitive. Formally, I think the mm. rules are, you know, and everybody, we're only allowed to inform people through ESA Star because uh, that's a way of ensuring that everybody gets the same sort of information. If we can find ways that, you know, it's still perceived as totally fair, there's no sort of skewing of uh, 
the, 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 the contract situation by us putting information out into domains like LinkedIn or whatever. Um, you know, how do it mean? Some people do it, some people don't. Uh, so we're looking for a way to do it systematically with, uh, you know, making sure it's fair for everybody. So um, well, other things, other things, let us know. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we're, you know, we want to have conversations. We want to make sure the information gets out, the information you need. Well, if it's out there in an open way, then it's up to uh, yeah. up, to, uh, up to companies, up to individuals to pick it up. Let's uh, let's uh, Emmanuel Mondon has uh, put uh, a couple of questions into the into the chat. Let's uh, yeah. let's open it up. Emmanuel, are you are you with us? He's with us. He's joining. There we go. Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Hiya. Hey, Gordon. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for the opportunity. Do you hear me well? Yeah. Yeah, I have two two questions. One related to uh, the work cross directorates. So, uh, are you working with other uh, ESA directorates? And uh, if yes, uh, with which ones and what for? Uh, and then the first question was related to uh, data spaces. Uh, you were speaking about um, gathering the, the demand from uh, different industry. And what is your view on the, the data sharing initiatives such as the, the common European data spaces? OK. Um, so yes, we're working with multiple directorates. So we work a lot with the commercialization directorate. Um, uh, so, I mean, they've got a number of elements. So the old, um, or still existing, BAS that used to be under uh, telecoms, that's moved to commercialization now. So we've kept our uh, cooperation with them. We're cooperating very closely with them on the um, Space for a Green Future Accelerator, as well as, um, for example, uh, uh, for the open call. I mean, if our, if, I mean the op our open call is focusing on, uh, we're really looking for innovative uh, developments we get a number of proposals that are maybe not innovative, but still make sense to do, but we're just not, we don't have the framework inside the open call to do them. So we make sure that on the tender evaluation boards, we have representatives from both BAS and Incubed so that they can see these proposals. And rather than us, you know, um, saying you know, at the time of the debrief, okay, you know, uh, the proposal, you know, you, you didn't get the end of it. It's not really innovative, but, you know, consider getting in touch with Bass or Incubed or whatever. The guys from Bass and Incubed see that in, in, in the tender evaluation board so we can accelerate the process. We're not going against the rules, but it, it, it just helps smooth the um, the transition to um, to other opportunities. We work a lot also with the, um, the PECs in the new member states office. Um, in uh, in the Czech department, and they're also running the uh, requesting party activity uh, set of programs. So that's with a number of new member states developing um, things like subsystems or uh, new capabilities that can then uh, feed into uh, some of the future EO activities. So we're making sure that the, the, that's all joined up with, the, like I say, with the, with these guys. We work also the commercialization is working with. Um, they're the guys doing the um, the BIC. So we make sure we've got a. Um, a really strong interaction so that the BICs know what they can get out of future EO uh, and Incubed and uh, we know um, how, you know, what, what else we need to do to stimulate uh, uh, opportunities, etc. for for the guys that are in the BIC. So that's, I mean, we're doing a lot with commercialization. Uh, we're working with um, telecoms, it's, it's called um, uh, communications and secure connectivity, I think it's called now. Uh, so we work with them on um, a new program called uh, Civil Security from Space. So that's looking at a combination of uh, Earth observation and uh, telecoms uh, capabilities for addressing security stakeholders, primarily um, sort of things like emergency response type stakeholders, not sort of uh, uh, law enforcement or that type of thing right now. Um, we work with, I mean, other directors. So we're working with the Melissa program, trying to bring them uh, in. I mean, they're, they're, Melissa's looking at... Uh, uh, things like, uh, well, the main focus is uh, how do we use the sort of standalone or not, um, isolated microbiology cells, uh, you know, as a, as, as a process for um, uh, waste reprocessing. So, um, you know, like uh, waste water, uh, other, 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 other ways, how do we uh, regenerate oxygen, food, uh, energy, like electric current things from 
these microbiological and biochemical processes. So that's with a view to, um, you know, extended um, manned space flight. But, you know, we, we there's a lot of, you know, there's we're seeing uh, the start of opportunities for things like uh, sustainable urban living as well. So these sorts of cells mm. in large, uh, large buildings can be a way of uh, turning waste into uh, energy and uh, other useful products as part of uh, uh, the sort of circular economy type uh, discussions that are that are going on. So there's a lot of uh, uh, connections with other directions. I mean, that's that's the ones that I can think of that I'm personally involved in. Um, tech as well. We do a lot. I mean, a lot of the the the, um, the new methods. Uh, we we collaborate very closely uh, with tech on, on these things because uh, some of what we're doing may be applicable in in uh, in other domains as well. So yeah, I mean. Uh, there's an increasing amount of uh, cross directorate uh, cooperation, I would say, uh, in 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 these sorts of domains now. Um, what, what was, oh, the, the the data space? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's 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 clearly a, uh, a, any of that sort of aggregation that takes the complexity uh, out and you know makes things more interoperable, more exchangeable, more more fusible. Yeah, it's uh, you know clearly that's. Uh, uh, you know, we need to be ensuring that that we can't just demand it. We have to put the underlying capabilities in place that enable it, and that's an important step towards that. So, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Emmanuel. Uh, is there um, any coordinated activity around uh, green transition? You've mentioned civil security. You mentioned. Uh, uh, green working group uh, just now, but uh, is there a, a coordinated? Yeah, so I mean, this is so we've got the Space for Green Future Accelerator. So that's a, mm. a cooperation between uh, ourselves and commercialization. And let's say we're trying to bring the Melissa guys in uh, on that as well. I mean, I think there's other uh, directorates we can uh, bring in uh, also. Um, I mean, uh, the, the green transition is absolutely huge, a really massive opportunity. And I don't think it's saying before it's how do we, you know, we're doing a lot in things like the SDGs in terms of how do you monitor. Uh, indicators and things for the SDGs. The green transition lets us get out of monitoring and, or it's an opportunity, let's get out of monitor, just monitoring and get into being part of the solution uh, for like industry transition, economic activity transition, urban uh, transitions. You know, how, how, how do we support these transition processes rather than just mm. uh, doing the monitoring? So that's, you know, monitoring is important. You can't manage what you can't measure, but, you know, we're really trying to, uh, catalyze uh, transition processes that might not be possible with without this sort you know the information and the analysis capabilities the forecasting etc uh, that's needed for that so green transition absolutely I mean, it's going to be uh, I would expect it to be a very important part of what's coming to the uh, ministerial in 2025 mm. okay if, if anyone has any more questions we've got a few minutes left um, we are running out of time but if you want to uh, raise a question just pop it into the into the chat. Um, we talked earlier about, or you talked earlier about um, sort of helping the transition of ideas from academia into industry and ensuring that they were bedded in, you know, they could be ex exploited. How, how do you maintain that balance between the sort of scientific drivers for actions and commercial drivers? I mean, obviously, um... There's, you know, there, there's a lot of dedicated activity on on the science. So when I mean, we're really, mm. you know, we're we're not looking at science for science sake. We're looking at what can we do with it. Um, yeah. So, um, if you look at, you know, what we'll always ask for, in in these sorts of uh, developments that are we're looking at, how do we get the new, uh, the new capabilities into industry? We're always going to be looking for use use cases. It's not just do an algorithm and or develop an algorithm and, and, and whatever. It's develop something, test it, and then try it out in real situations with real users to see uh, to see how it works. So it's, it's not just the theory. In, it, do, it, do, you, the, do you provide the, um, the, the, the framework for bringing the two, the academia and the industry together? How do you, how do you foster that? I mean, yes. I mean, we're, um, you know, we make available the, uh, I mean, the normal part of the tenders is you know, the um, uh, we'll have a sort of um, uh, selection, but representative selection of the, of the publications that are there for you mm -hmm. in, in the tender. So you know 
who the people are. Okay. Uh, we'll have, um, you know, like say in place like Living Planet, wherever you know, we can have the dedicated workshops so you can see uh, who's there. I mean, we had, like last Living Planet, uh, we, we did a, an ITT on um, on health. Uh, when was that? March, I think. And again, I mean, that, that was the same situations. How do how, and it's, 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 it's just getting started, but it was the same sort of situation. There's a lot of sort of academic research that isn't getting into the, the, the sort of operational uh, practices. So, you know, we had our uh, two packed, overcrowded sessions at LPS in Bonn, uh, where we had the sort of academics and industry and everybody all together. So that, that type of um, combination is always uh, is always helpful. And, you know, we're, I say, because we're asking for the use cases um, with real operational users, it's, you know, that's forcing, even if the academia want to get out into the uh, the operational environment it's mm. not going to you know you, there's going to have to be the partnerships to get uh, uh the sort of relevant users uh trying these things out in real operational situations so um we're i mean we're not saying you absolutely have to uh work with these guys you know we, with these guys but it's you know if you uh, we're you know we're, we're we're creating the conditions that you know the cooperation is the best way forward and the most efficient conditions and, and putting the signposts out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, we're not, you know, we're not absolutely forcing you to do stuff. But you know, if you want to do things efficiently, build on what's there already. Don't reinvent the wheel, and you know, get everybody working to their strengths and working together. Not um, try and do stuff that you can't really do, and you know, the budget's not there for you to develop capabilities from scratch. You need to be, uh, you, need, you need to be cooperating with people doing the right things. Okay. Um, just finally, then, when, when we were talking um, before, uh, we were talking about new tools, new contracting tools, and uh, we've seen the DPS come in. Yeah. You said ESA can be an anchor tenant within that uh, DPS scheme. And I mean, mm. it, again, the concept is, is really good. Um, we have to see how it will, will really work in, in practice, but the uh, the introduction of the DPS, I think, was uh, was was really. I mean, great. DPS isn't necessarily just for the anchor tenancy type thing. I mean, we're investigating it in that framework, but you mm. know, I mean, I would see, uh, you know, it, it makes things easier for uh, some of the more complex uh, proposals uh, that uh, industry would have to write. So we, we look at, you know, hopefully we're, we're, we'll be looking at our DPS in a uh, a wider uh, okay. set of situations. But again, you know, we're always look, we're always interested in how can we simplify. What, what we're asking for, I mean, if you look at um, a lot of our tenders, um, we, um, you know, for example, I mean, on, for, on the financial proposal, um, you know, I mean, everybody hates the PSS forms. Uh, we need, you know, we need a certain amount of financial information to understand where the, uh, um, where the, uh, where the money's going is it's public money so you know it's our response we, we have to be responsible sure. it has to be traceable sure. but you know we don't need you know them bits and bytes so you know we're trying to minimize the amount of pss forms we're asking for in the financial information we're trying to um uh, we're trying to minimize the amount of admin stuff in general that we're having to that we're, we're having to ask for um and you know personally i mean it was even uh we were in uh uh a negotiation last week where you know we're even though we're, we're trying to get out of the um you know the sort of blind uh, application of ecss type approaches so that all the risks are managed in advance um we're, we're not there yet and i think there's you know well, we will be looking at um where risks are managed in a different way how do we change um project management approaches uh, inside ESA as well i mean obviously if we're uh, building a very expensive Earth Explorer, and uh, you know it's a it's a technology we've never tried before. Um, we're we're not going to be very open to uh, different discussions, but I think where we can look, you know, where 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 risks can be managed in in a in a different way. Let's look at how the, how the whole process can be changed. Uh, and I think and the place to start that easiest is probably some somewhere like us with the uh, downstream or the less critical uh, developments to get started with build how it works where the limitations are what we have to be careful of and take it from there so that's you know we are trying to simplify stuff and make it as easy as possible 
that will be very interesting to follow. There's one one last question that we'll just take from, from the chat, Gustavo Cagliori Satel, who's asking a very precise question. Um, Gustavo? Yes, how are you doing? Hiya. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Hi, Gordon. We Hi. got in the last uh, future EO proposal, 79 points and we do not get the the, the money just to develop the, the proposal we sent a um, consultant about that and we didn't get any any response about it. I, I I would like to know what is the the, the cut points uh, on the overall of the analysis and, and the, the the proposals. Um, so what we do is uh, we take the top, uh, however many, um, so it's normally, it's too competitive, the open call, right? I mean, the new one that we just opened, uh, we've got more money, so we're able to uh, select more proposals uh, per batch. Um, we're, I mean, we were getting, you know, regularly, you know, I mean, the, uh, all the proposals selected, we're getting over 80 in, in, the, in the weighted average. Um, just, I mean, we would take the top 10, 12, whatever, um, if we, I mean, you know, we've got it. We've got a. That's about the budget we have to spend per per batch, ten and, between ten and twelve up in the last call. Um, if there was, if we get to twelve and there's a 0. 0.25 or 0. 0.5 percent uh, difference, then we take the next one as well. We didn't. We don't want to separate over such mm -hmm. a small amount. Um, so we might take one more or two more. But you know, that's that's more or less where we're. Uh, um, where we're going until we would get to a sort of justifiable gap. Uh, but it was too competitive. Really, um, you know, your situation is not unique in this. And, uh, you know, it's not nice for you. It's not nice for us as well. I mean, it's really frustrating seeing these good proposals that we, we yeah, from one, our side, that, that, we can't, that we can't go with. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, the, the, the selection is normally, we wouldn't normally use one point as a, uh, as a separation. Um, what so what we've got now is basically you know much more money uh, in uh, allocated to the open call so hopefully we can um yeah, okay. i mean let, let's see what let's see what i mean the, the first batch closes uh, at the end of october let's see what what we get i mean the, yeah. the, the i mean pers my personal general, yeah. yeah my personal objective is basically if you're getting above very good I would like that we're 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 selecting you okay so and, and um but let's you know i mean let's 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 see what we get yeah, just a last question. Uh, you would, would like to prefer just to improve an, an proposal like this with a very high score, and it's better to present a new one project. I think uh, uh, that's uh, something I think we should address in a, in a debrief with you. So uh, can you, I'd mm. ask you to con contact the contracts officer, uh, request a debrief, and we'll have that discussion with you. Because um, I mean, we need to look at the proposal. I mean, there's not a sort of generic one size fits all um, an answer to that. So, uh, okay. Let's, okay. So we, we, we need to look at your proposal, the TB um, evaluation. I have a discussion with you as to uh, what makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, you about very con much. Con okay. contact the contracts officer um, that was that was named. Uh, I think it was uh, it's probably Dora Tamash. Yes, um, that's right. Yeah. yeah so sent, send an email I to sent her. The, the email to to her. But uh, I, I didn't get a. Send it again and put. Can that. you send it again and put me in copy? And I'll. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. Okay. Thank good you luck, Gustavo. Thank you. Thank good, you. Thank you. Good, luck, good luck with your pursuit. Um, well, let's close it there now. Uh, Thomas Suko is asking if somebody can drop in a link for the uh, DPS um, system. Uh, it's it's linked with the contributing missions for, uh, for for Copernicus at the moment, but if it if it's going to broaden, then I imagine there'll be more. Right, so we're we're trying it out. I mean, and you know, I mean, there's some things that are, um, yeah, some things are good. Some things, I mean, like, um, you know, one of the issues is it looks, you know, there is a risk that um, you know all the different bits get submitted by different parts, especially if it's a big company, and nobody from the bidder, uh, in some cases, is looking at the overall. Um, proposal for the consistency. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, things like that that we need to think, you know, how do, how do we deal with that? 
uh, that that type of issue. So you know, it's it's good and you know it's simpler, well, it's it's yeah. easier to evaluate, but you know, there's still some hiccups that we need to yeah uh, we need to iron out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess hopefully you'll have a discussion with Gustavo around that, and uh, if others wish to uh, pursue, they can uh, they can be in contact with you. Um, and we look forward. I guess, guess if if you're going to look at the DPS in different uh, contexts, then that will be uh, of, of great interest. Um, thank you very much for uh, for joining. Um, I think we, it's been a, an interesting uh, discussion, uh, quite quite wide ranging. Um, please, uh, we obviously will 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 talk again um, and uh, keep. Keep, you know, Ersk is here as a channel to help uh, help you as well. We've. Uh, I I think you know. I mean, we really appreciate the fact. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously we talk to individual companies, but being able to talk to the overall industry and have the you know, you've got the um, the mechanisms to bring an entire industry perspective to us on uh, on a whole range of issues, and you know, we can have these these sorts of discussions is is very useful because, I mean. You know, we can have consultations with all of the different companies. You know, everybody come to us and mm. have a consultation. But in, you know, I mean, if we're on sensitive subjects, you might not want to stand up in front of a bunch of people who may be your competitors and saying, I'm really bad at the following things. And everybody else goes, ha, ha, ha. You know, it's, uh, th th that's, mm. that can be a, a difficult situation. So having a sort of data collection capability on particular issues that is, anonymized and, and whatever so we can get we can understand the nature of the issue it's not people have to think we better say these things in front of ESO otherwise or we don't want to see these things in front of these other guys if if we can really get to you know a, a, a more accurate characterization of the issues the, uh, their importance um constraints etc that's really valuable and, I, and you know that's really what we're getting from Ars can really appreciate that Good and uh, you know clearly if there's if there's more then um, you you you're in regular discussion with Emmanuel so uh, yeah that, that will come out. But also you know I mean you know people everybody feel free to contact us directly. It's uh, like I say it's our job to uh, yeah. Yeah, to, yeah to to be available and you know. But it's uh, it's also as you say a question of having a collective yeah. view rather than individual. Use view. your delegations as well. You know I mean if 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 you know if you don't want to contact us, call, you know contact your delegations and get yeah, them to. Wave their delegate badge and bang table at at, at, yeah. um, at, at at program boards, and you know we listen to the delegations, we listen to you, we listen to both of you. It's uh, so you've got a number of mechanisms for um, getting your voice heard. Okay, no, and, and addressing addressing problems or concerns or issues that that you, that you think you might have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so thanks. We'll bring the EO Cafe to uh, to a close at that point. Uh, next EO Cafe in two weeks' time. Um, normal time, normal place. We'll be talking about uh, strengthening links with uh, with Africa. Uh, we have some guests from uh, different African institutions, and uh, it will be an opportunity to discuss with them what opportunities exist and what uh, what we can do to increase the, the links. So at that point, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us. Um, thank you.